One of the ideas that we had in terms of trying to bring some colour, partly a way of, I guess, overcoming a bit of the austerity of a lot of contemporary architecture, just trying to give it a little bit of life. So my name's Daniel Walkenberg, director of Poly Studio. The original house was actually an early 1960s yellow brick house. It, it had some nice qualities, the house, but it had never actually been engineered. It was really, really cracked. At the end of the day, we made the call that, you know, we could probably achieve more by starting again. The brief was having a very easy living space that was quite flexible to accommodate being able to have sort of large family gatherings and dinners. The way that I sort of approached it was really just locating all the kind of the public zone of living, dining, kitchen on the ground floor, and then all the sort of private area of bedroom upstairs. And that gave us, you know, a lot of flexibility and actually increased the amount of garden area we had over the previous house. That was really a key priority and also to get some garden that was actually more oriented, you know, to the north. Yeah, we worked with landscape architecture practice called Bush Projects to develop the planting. And it was very much based around an idea about having a combination, I guess, of native planting, but also, you know, edible planting. And it's sort of now at the point of it's really sort of taken root over you know, the last year or so. When you're sitting at the dining table, just looking out to the courtyard, it's just starting to feel really, you know, really verdant and, um, yeah, really nice. This was my first kind of project, trying to incorporate a passive house approach. I'd always been trying to do the best we could in terms of sustainability and trying to create energy efficient construction. Some of the key principles are, first of all, making the house as airtight as you can. Then there's also incorporating higher than standard levels of insulation within the building fabric better quality windows and doors. For this, we actually ended up importing some triple glazed windows from Germany. And then the other key aspect is eliminating thermal bridging of building elements between inside and outside. The ethos about the selection of materials was very much, especially externally, looking for very durable materials that don't really require any maintenance. Externally, there's a combination of some brickwork, metal cladding with a standing seam profile and some fibre cement sheet. The internal palette, I guess, is very much driven by looking for materials that have their own sort of inherent character and warmth and properties. The use of polished concrete, timber, plywood, they're probably the key, you know, materials that are sort of helping to just create a little bit of character internally. I've been interested in the system of colour that Le Corbusier developed over a number of years called the polychromy, which is effectively a palette of colours that sort of inherently compatible with each other and you can mix and match them you know quite easily and they all seem to look good in combination. We actually gave the kids the chance to select a colour each out of that and we selected one and we came up with a you know a palette of colours that matched very closely to, to some of the colours out of the system. In terms of a design ethic, you know, I guess I apply a fairly simple and I guess minimalist approach in terms of trying to use the inherent properties of the materials themselves to provide that warmth. 